Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, January the 1st, 2024. Happy New Year. Now, um, these videos are a reflection of what's going on around us. And uh, unfortunately, um, today, January the 1st, um, there is um, a square aspect between Venus and Saturn. You know, this aspect has been um, coming together for the last couple of days. And so what you see in this video is naturally going to be a reflection of what's going on in the sky. And there is a square between Venus and Saturn. So this video that you're watching is going to have a Venus-Saturn feel to it. I'm sorry. Um, uh, if that's a problem, um, you don't have to watch the video. Um, so that means um, I want to talk about Venus and Saturn. I want to talk about squares between Venus and Saturn. That is a theme. Um, that's the theme of this video. Um, of course, first of all, I will be talking about the astrology and the I Ching for today, um, Monday, January the 1st. But this theme... Um, you know, that picture that I've got on the thumbnail, I mean, I, I saw that picture. Um, to me, I found that picture really horrifying. This person looks really scary to me. Um, he perhaps embodies uh, the worst of Venus Saturn. Um, his name is um, was Hans Adolf Prutzmann, and he... he he was a Nazi. He um, was involved in um, atrocities during the Second World War, particularly in um, Ukraine and I think in the Baltic States and um, in Croatia, I think, um, against Jews, against partisans. Um, yeah, he had a Venus Saturn square in his chart. And yeah, I looked at that. Yeah, that picture, I found that picture quite, quite, um, quite horrifying. Um, really, uh, yeah, evil in his eyes. Those eyes were apparently were blue. Um, kind of, um, kind of, kind of not surprising. Um, so yeah, he is one of the, one of the people I want to briefly, um, look at, um, and I want to look at a lot of other people, not a lot, but some other people who have Venus square Saturn um, in their horoscopes. Um, and I want to look at a couple of events which have um, Venus square Saturn in them. Um, so, you know, apologies for the material. But as I said, the year starts with Venus square Saturn. So let's let's deal with Venus square Saturn. OK, um, but before I do that, um, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today. First day of 2024, Monday, um, January the 1st, 2024. OK, so uh, let's uh, let's look at what's going on. Um, so uh, this is the chart for noon, uh, New York. Uh, January the first, twenty twenty-four. Um, so you know what is what you know what what are the main things going on astrologically? Okay, Venus is square Saturn. Um, you can see that it it's it's pretty close. Um, Venus in Sagittarius is square um, Saturn in Saturn in Pisces. Now, Venus is not in a terrible position. Yes, it's square Saturn, but it's in mutual reception to Jupiter. Uh, you know, Jupiter is in Taurus, Venus is sign. Um, Venus is in Sagittarius, a sign ruled by Jupiter. But for today, Venus is applying to the square of Saturn. Um, so in terms of relationships, it may not be the best day. You know, Venus is the planet of relating. Um, and it makes this square aspect to Saturn. It might be difficult to relate. It might be difficult um, to get close to people. And, um, you know, Venus can also have an impact on just generally how we feel. 
And, you know, some of us, when we wake up today, uh, New Year, we might, oh, we might be not feeling great. We might have a certain sense of um, sort of emptiness, maybe, with Venus square Saturn. I don't like to use the word depression um, because because that word is too clinical. Um, but just a feeling of, you know, a feeling of sort of negativity and not really wanting to relate, you know. You know, Venus in Sagittarius, yeah, would want to relate, would want to be optimistic and happy, but then it has to deal with Saturn. So, um, so that is um, that is a bit of a problem. Um, and while this is going on, you know, a lot of us might be really quite focused on. Um, sort of annoying details you know the moon is in virgo um okay the moon is separating from the square of saturn so it's it's not that bad but you know there are these details that we might uh but we might find annoying at least annoying in the first instance um but perhaps we should remember that the moon in virgo is making a trine um to the sun in Capricorn. Um, you know, it is making a trine for all of us, wherever we are. But I think this is going to be going to be particularly important if we're um, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, sort of the more easterly parts of the world. Um, but I think we're all going to feel it. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe in America, Western Europe, it's not going to be the Americas, Western Europe, it's not going to be such a big deal. But uh, yeah, I mean, moon square sun, even though it not, might not be exact in the Americas, Western Europe, it's going, you're going to have, we're going to have a fundamental sense of balance and harmony. I mean, even if we do feel a little bit negative about the world, um, it's not going to be like crazy negative. Um, and if we focus on doing stuff, you know, relating to material, material things, you know, material could be in terms of money, could be in terms of, I don't know, planting things, um, working with flowers, that kind of thing, plants, whatever, the earth. Um, great thing to do um, to, today if you have the opportunity. I think um, uh, there'll be a real feeling of, of satisfaction there. And, um, you know, many of us um, with the moon in Virgo, trining the sun in Capricorn, we're going to appreciate things that are natural. We're going to want to steer clear of f fake stuff, particularly if that fake stuff is being eaten. But we're going to, we're going to want to avoid all that additives, chemicals. We'll, we'll be more aware of that than usual. Um, we're going to, you know, we'll be thinking about sort of natural ingredients, um, eating good, high quality food. I think that's, that is important for all of us, um, maybe particularly Virgos, but all of us um, should really watch what we eat today. You know, eat well. Um, and by eat well, I mean, eat stuff which is which is healthy. Um, you know, it's the first day of the year, moon in Virgo. Can't we carry on with that habit? Um can't we eat healthily for the rest of the year? Uh, we can start the year how we plan on um, how we plan on continuing the year. Um, so I think that that moon trine that that moon trine the sun, wherever we are, uh, is going to keep us sane. Um, is going to keep us grounded, and you know, hopefully, will encourage us to sort things out, um, whether it's food diet, um, planting whatever vegetables are right, are the right things to plant at this time, if you have the opportunity, um, getting into nature. Um, so, you know, there's, there's plenty, you know, there's plenty that can be done to, to ground us. And we, we, you know, we, we shouldn't be too bothered about, um, relationships you know it's not probably the, not the best day of the year for relationships with venus square saturn um but you know there are there are other things going on um now mercury does need to be considered uh you know mercury doesn't 
you know, we need careful consideration of Mercury. Um, because this evening um, in, in the east coast of America, 10.09 p.m. Uh, in New York, it'll be tomorrow if you're in Europe, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, um, uh, Mercury goes stationary direct. Um, Mercury is coming to us, comes to a standstill. It's been going retrograde for three weeks now it goes direct um and you know we might really feel that um so this evening in the americas just a feeling of things you know things becoming clearer um we can now start um moving forward um with with um with some of some of our ideas you know particularly now you know all the new year celebration are o is over so was it really a celebration um or was it just a, an expensive waste of time uh i don't know um sorry i'm a bit pure feeling a bit puritanical today but that's not again that's not surprising as venus square saturn I mean, you, you're probably feeling puritanical today as well if you're honest about it um so that's uh yeah that's um that's some of the main stuff going on today as far as um midpoints are concerned now if you've been listening to me over the last week um you you will have um you will have noticed that i've been saying that uh, mars has making been making a square to neptune and i and i made some warnings about mars square and neptune you know we have to be, be careful about how we how we assert ourselves um you know we might get attracted to the wrong things um you know, at worst, Mars Square Neptune can be involved with, you know, it can be connected with, I don't know, things like drugs and crime and all that kind of stuff, but not that I'm suggesting that's anything you're interested in. Um, but that can be a problem with Mars Square Neptune. I also talked about Mercury Square Neptune. Um, Mercury has recently been Square, ne square Neptune. Um, that's about getting the wrong ideas, um, jumping to the wrong conclusions and saying the wrong things. Um, but there comes a point where we are halfway between Mars square Neptune and Mercury square Neptune. You see, Mercury has, since last week, has has been going backwards. It's now 22.11 Sagittarius at noon in New York, just about to go direct. And so think about the halfway point between um, Mars and Mercury. So the halfway point, is about 24, 25 Sagittarius. And where is Neptune? 2505 Pisces. In other words, today, Neptune is on the Mercury-Mars midpoint. Now, that could be um, a bit of a problem. Um, uh, Ne sorry, Neptune on the Mercury Mars midpoint. So you know what is what is the principle of Mercury and Mars? Um, you bring them together. You know Mars is about um, aggression. It's about asserting ourselves. Ourselves. Um, Mercury is about um, communication. It's about how we think. Um, you put Mercury and Mars together. You might come up with the idea of perhaps um, an angry communicator telling people what we think um, with great vigor um, perhaps being being quite attacking in what we say um, and certainly attacking in what we think you know we can have some angry thoughts so we've got Mercury and Mars coming together and then we have Neptune on the midpoint so that means we can speak angrily, but Neptune indicates um, a certain amount of confusion. We might speak angrily uh, for the wrong reasons. Um, we might decide to criticize someone and really just go over the top, but we might have just got it all wrong. Um, so let me just give you an give you an idea about what um, what Vitter and friends say in their book Rules for Planetary Pictures. This this book um, 
if you can get hold of it, it'd be great. Um, I do recommend this book. Um, but uh, yeah, rules for planet Alfred Vitter's rules for planetary pictures: the astrology of tomorrow, and um, that's what it calls itself. Um, so if we, it has all the midpoints here. So we go through Mercury, Mercury, Mars. Uh, so Mercury, Mars, uh, and then we read down to Neptune. It says. Um, to speak badly, to lisp, a defect in speech, strong imagination, to commit blunders, to be excited over nothing, will to destroy. So you get the picture. Um, we can say things which are very caustic, which are very unpleasant. Maybe even the will to destroy, as Witter and friends say. Um, but why? What's the point? It's because we've 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 come to a fundamental misunderstanding. So um, we do have to be um, very careful what we say. And I said that last week um, that we have to be careful what we say. And I know that some people watching this video that really resonated. Um, and I would repeat that warning for today um, because you know we've got we've kind of got two squares put together mercury neptune square mars neptune square mercury put together because um neptune is square the mercury mars um the mercury mars midpoint so that's the overall picture um astrologically for today um i think that's a picture that is going to it, it will kind of affect all of us depends what we're doing um and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the 12 signs of the zodiac and how this is the astrological picture might be might be um, impacting um, each of the 12. OK, so here goes. These are my forecasts for today, which is um, Monday, January the 1st, 2024. Aries. Aries, um, in a way, you are coming down to earth. Uh, you're beginning to see the world for what it is. Uh, you're beginning to be um, aware of aware of the details. Uh, you can see the imperfections. You can see actually you can see imperfections all around you. Um, this is the real world um, and uh, I think you're going to want to do something about it um, but you do have to take it slowly um, and you know just because you see that something's wrong with the world doesn't mean you have to comment you know there's plenty of scope here for um, saying the wrong thing um, um, getting angry for no reason at all. So maybe what you have to do is just accept the world and all its imperfections. You know, that's the world. That's the way it is. Um, the world is not perfect. Um, and in fact, as an Aries, um, perfectionism doesn't really suit you. It's just that right now you're quite sensitive um, to all that um, might be um, might be wrong with the world um, and on a positive note I do think you can be quite constructive um, you know you you are in a in a stage at the moment where you you know you do want to be successful or you do want to make things happen um, I think you do understand the importance of patience um, and in your own small way you can, you know, slowly but surely um, make the world um, a better place, but especially on a material level, um, you know, and maybe you need to start with your immediate environment. You know, it is January the 1st. I mean, in most places, it's a holiday, isn't it? Um, you can be um, you can be quite secluded, probably. I mean, because it's January the 1st. Uh, so in your own way, you can make the world make the make. Well, start by making your world a better place. Focus on material things, um, making sure that, uh, you know, 
your immediate environment is is safe and secure and healthy, um, that kind of thing. One point about um, relationships, um, some of the people close to you may be feeling um, a bit uh, down in the dumps. Um, okay, they might not be expressing the fact that they're down in the dumps, but you know, if you can just show a little bit of sensitivity, I think you'll start to be start to be aware of that. Um, and I think that you can actually do things to, um, you know, you can do things to improve the situation. So, um, you know, consider what might be bothering the people close to you and, you know, work out in a step by step way what you can do um, to improve the situation for them. And of course, if you can improve the situation for them, you'll also be improving um, the situation um, for yourself. Taurus. Uh, Taurus, um, okay, there are a few problems today. Um, you know, I don't want to exaggerate, um, but, you know, Venus is your ruling planet. Um, and Venus is making a square to Saturn. And I think that uh, some Taurians... Um, maybe um maybe brooding um you may be thinking that uh things are not right um you don't really want to you don't really want to tell people how you feel um yeah and it you know it it's 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 difficult um and you know you might you might take the view that something is really blocking you is preventing you from realizing your you know your hopes and your your wishes for the future something is just in your way um and you know if you're socializing today uh you know one of your at least one of your friends or associates or whatever might be might be acting as a real it might feel as if they're really acting as a real block on you um but really you shouldn't take it uh you shouldn't take it too personally um you know if you do if you do feel that something is getting in your way um it is only a temporary situation it, it's not going to go on forever um by tomorrow tuesday uh the situation will be improving um, so don't take don't take um, any frustrations you might feel um, too seriously. And instead, you should perhaps consider some of the good things about today. Um, you know, the moon and the sun are in both. They're both in Earth signs, um, and they're actually sort of making a trine. Not okay. It's not a very close trine, but there's a there's a kind of what we call in astrology a grand trine in earth it's still there um you know you've got you know because you've got you know jupiter and uranus are in your star sign you've got moon and Ver you know and you're starting you're an, you're an earth sign aren't you taurus um taurus is an earth sign of course and moon is in virgo that's an earth sign sun is in capricorn that's an earth sign um so taurus you, you kind of need to do what you know best um with with this grand trine in earth you know you just ground yourself um you know getting concerned about who is frustrating you getting concerned about um plans for the future potentially being blocked which of course is not true in the, in the grand scheme of things but getting worried about these things it doesn't doesn't really become you just ground yourself um focus on something real um you know, as I was telling everyone, you could something real could be um, digging potatoes, um, doing stuff around the house, cooking. I don't know, fixing something, whatever, something ground, something that can ground you. Because Taurus is an you're an Earth sign. You do that, and um, and you know that way um, things should things should be fine. 
Gemini. Well, the big news for Gemini is that uh, Mercury, your ruler, which has been going retrograde backwards for three, the last three um, three weeks, is now coming to a standstill in preparation for going forward. Okay, if you're in your, if you're in Europe, um, Europe, Asia, Australasia, Mercury won't won't actually come to a complete standstill until tomorrow but if you're in the americas and this evening mercury is is um stationary direct um and, you know this is a time where things can start moving um particularly ideas uh, some of your plans you know which you know you might might have felt that some of your plans were really quite stuck well i think i think they can start moving now um um it's okay. Um, uh, things things are certainly um, things are certainly improving in that department. Um, now, as far as um, other people are concerned, um, there seem to be two somewhat contradictory trends at work today. Um, you know, maybe not just today, but you know, the whole beginning of beginning of the week. Um, on one hand, um, you know, Mercury, your ruler, is um, is um, it is exactly on the midpoint of the Sun and Venus, uh, and that's great. You know, you can see if you actually look at the chart, you can. You can see, you know, there is Mercury. It's, you know, 19 degrees from Venus. And it's around 19 degrees from the Sun the other side. So Mercury is hitting this midpoint of Sun and Venus. And that, I think, gives you great social skills. Um, you can, you'll, have a, you'll have a clear sense of who you want to be with. What kind of people you, you want to hang out with. And... I think today, um, indeed not just today, but over the next couple of days, you can start to move um, to, to, you know, to find these people, to interact with these people for whatever reason you want to hang out with them or you want to, want to interact with them. Maybe you've got something you want, uh, maybe in a career or business sense. Maybe it's about friendship. I suppose it depends. It depends on the situation. At the same time, um, Mercury is... Um, aspecting the Sun Saturn midpoint, and that kind of gives us a different feel. Um, it's about separation. Uh, it's about farewells. I mean, I think I talked about this yesterday, and I think in a recording I did yesterday or the day before. It is perhaps a time to say goodbye, um, and so it might be a time for Gemini's to have a sort of a changing of the guard in terms of your social life um, as you move in you know, first day of 2024. There's perhaps some people who, you know, you've, you've got bored of them. You know, Gemini's do get bored of people. It's, it's a terrible truth. Um, and, you know, I say that as a Gemini myself. Sometimes you just realize that you're just bored of people. You just move it. You want to move on. Uh, and that's OK. Don't apologize uh, because it's your, you know, that's the way you are. That's your, your, your Gemini. But if you're bored of one group of people, or maybe a group of people who are just not doing you any good anymore, you've got to replace them. So it's time to find new, uh, find perhaps a new set of associates, friends, or whatever. I know, I know that sounds callous, um, but uh, I, you know. One Gemini talking to another Gemini. That's that's how it how it feels um, with that. Um, so don't worry, it'll work out. You'll 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 do the right thing. I mean, don't be callous. You've got to do it in a in a in a responsible way. Cancer. You are in quite a good position today I would have said um, you know reason being that uh, you know the moon is your ruler the moon's in Virgo um, moon is quite well placed um, in Virgo 
Um, interestingly, um, Moon and Virgo uh, rules the um, it rules the earth signs, the Moon and Virgo by night. <laughs> so when the moon is in moon is Virgo, it's in Virgo, it's particularly strong at night. So um, perhaps today you're going to be stronger during the hours of darkness as a, in a, as a general general principle. Um, and, and I'm not suggesting you're a vampire or anything like that. Just right now, the dark, the dark, the hours of darkness um, might be um, uh, might be better for you than the hours of light. Um, uh, all things being equal, um, but uh, the moon um, in Virgo um, is making a trine aspect to the sun, um, so you do have a great sense of balance today. Um, balance um, and optimism and excitement because the moon is actually starting to make a, a trine aspect to Uranus um, and I think you're able to communicate this excitement um, and you know if you feel if you feel that you haven't got this excitement where you are you may be able to make a short uh, journey today uh, a short journey, it could be just 50 yards, 50 meters, that might be enough, might be a few miles. I'm not saying you, you don't have to go hundreds of miles, just a very short journey. Possibly you can do it, it's a kind of journey you may be able to do by foot. Um, and that could make all the difference. Um, just that short geographical change, um, a few meters, few kilometers whatever whether you're metric or imperial i don't know um just can make can make all the difference and you can suddenly put yourself in a position um where you can really enjoy everything on offer and and, in, and at the same time um enjoy um other people's company so cancer i think overall first day of the year should be quite good for you and hopefully um the year will continue um in that vein Leo, um, January the 1st, um, you are thinking about um, practical things uh, today, uh, for example, money. Um, I don't think you should worry about money. In fact, I think you should consider... Um, how you might be able to, you know, improve your financial situation. Now, that's not to, that's, I'm not saying you have to sort of do planning and scheming and that kind of thing, but you have to, you can, um, it's okay to feel this sort of vague sense of confidence that you are going to be able um, to make financial improvements if you feel that financial improvements are needed there's a sort of vague sense of confidence that you know you can sort of start to sort things out um and you know and you know particularly because um you know the moon is in virgo which is a sign in the leo chart often connected with money and it's making a fortunate aspect to the sun which is of course your ruler um and so yeah be confident but uh, and you know, over the next few days, you can start to think about how, in a practical sense, um, you're able to actually um, create um, the kind of changes you want to create um, in your life. Um, now, on a different note, um, there is some possibility uh, that you might be quite uh, manipulative, Um Reason being um, that uh, you know the sun, your the sun is your ruler, and it's on the Mercury Pluto midpoint. Um, in other words, the sun is actually conjunct the midpoint of Mercury and Pluto. So Mercury and Pluto, as a pair, is very much about persuasion, um, trying to persuade people to do things. Um, and I think you're going to, you are going to be, um, yeah, you are going to be very persuasive, um, um, particularly about the essentials of life. You know, you, 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 you will, you are going to have some ideas about what is important in life. Um, the, 
the you know nuts and bolts issues about what people need to do to sort themselves out what you need to sort yourself out and um, in terms of getting people to make the changes you want to, them to make I think you'll be able to you'll be able to use clever persuasion um, to get what you want now don't go over the top don't go on a power trip but maybe your persuasiveness um, can actually be um, be a force for good Virgo so like Gemini um, you have got Mercury as your um, ruling planet uh, because Mercury rules both Gemini and Virgo um, so Mercury is coming to a standstill uh, having been going retrograde for three weeks and now it's going to go direct so Virgo um, you might find or feel that you can sort of get the show back on the road um, you know the last three weeks some of your plans might have gone astray um, there might have been um, hiccups hurdles that kind of thing um, but that's changing now um, you can start to you know you can start to move forward um, with with some of your ideas um, and um, I I think you know today you know you might realize that you actually have um, you actually have quite a lot of support um, if you explain yourself I think people will absolutely understand what you're talking about um, I think you have a good idea about who can help you um, so now might be um, you know now might be a good time to to you know reach out um, to, to those people who can help you to um, help you to get get what you want um, now with the moon moving through your star sign I mean it happens obviously once a month you've got moon goes through Virgo has a one month cycle but you know when while the moon is moving through Virgo it is a time when Virgos do need to focus on um, their health you know moon in Virgo likes to have to live and exist in a healthy environment you know just clean air um, clean food high quality food um, you know no additives that kind of thing um, so today you know make sure that uh, everything around you is clean and healthy um, you know I know it's a it's a complete um, stereotype um, that uh, Virgos like to clean I mean that's not true but I mean it is a good idea to do sufficient cleaning to make sure that you are you are healthy for example you don't want to be breathing in dust today you know so uh, that kind of thing um, so um, you might want to might want to consider that um, but it's because that's what you want to do I mean, it's not because you're being pressured by by other people to to do, to um, uh, make your environment clean and healthy that's something you're doing for for um, for yourself Libra Libra there is a problem Libra because um, Venus is your ruling planet um, Venus rules um, Venus rules Taurus and it rules Libra and uh, your star sign and um, Venus um, Venus is making a square to Saturn um, today um, don't worry it doesn't last long uh, by tomorrow that square will be breaking up um, but today you you might find that it's quite difficult to express yourself uh, you know there are things you want to do there are things you want to say um, there are probably places you want to go to um, and you know you're you are feeling a bit restless but then there are going to be material and perhaps emotional realities that you have to deal with that seem to threaten to grind you to a standstill um, now it's 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 not a situation you can escape from it's it's not about 
abandoning your responsibilities or trying to pretend that these restrictions don't exist. I mean, they do exist. Um, but what you kind of have to do is you have to balance your desires, your needs with this external pressure. Uh, it might be connected to, you know, the people around you. You have to say, OK, there's a situation that needs to be dealt with. You can't do what you want straight away. You need to deal with situ this situation and that situation. And it's boring. It's tedious. It's annoying. Um, but you just have to do what's required of you. I won't take as long as you had feared. And you know, once it's out of the way, um, you'll have the freedom you need to do what you know, do what you want to do. And okay, maybe you can't do everything today, but in which case it's fine. Um, you can you can do it tomorrow. So um, that that's not that's not such a problem. Um, but in general, uh, you may be more comfortable um when you're sort of alone today um well, certainly not mixing i'm not mixing too much with other people i think if you do mix with other people it may be you may find that it's people that those people are trying to sort of um uh you know restrict your freedom of action somehow um that's just building up annoyances for yourself and of course if you're alone in your own space or with people who you know and trust, um, it may be um, it may be that things will be um, that things will be a lot easier. Scorpio, your freedom is going to be quite important today. Um, you, you you know there are there are things you want to do. Um, you do not you're not going to take kindly uh to following um other people's rules um and at the same time you're also aware and i think you have been aware for some for you know maybe for the last few days or weeks that there have been that there have been sort of restrictions um on your freedom of action something's been holding you back now it may be something outside you has been holding you back your 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 material condition uh the people you have to deal with or it may be something 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 to do with your own psychology holding you back um but today um there may be a feeling of um release you suddenly say hold on uh I don't have to be restricted. Uh, these things holding me back, they're, you know, they're getting weaker. They're getting so weak that I can now uh, assert my freedom. And that is something I think you can do. You know, I'm not saying you have to do it in a revolutionary way. You don't have to do it by, you know, attacking people, um, um, having arguments. It can be a quite private understanding and transformation where you understand that those things holding you back or you thought the things that you thought were holding you back um no longer apply um but in the process uh it's it's important that you're not selfish and that you you really should be considering um some of the people around you um because you know not everyone um is a happy camper <laughs> um some people um are a little bit miserable i don't know why um but you're a scorpio you're a sensitive scorpio you know you know you should, if you if you're honest with yourself you know about it um you know what's bothering people um and you can take um you can take active measures to um help sort the problem out you know scorpio when Scorpio wants to be, Scorpio can be a great healer. And I think you have the capacity here um, to heal someone's... Um, uh, OK, I was, was going to say psychological wounds, but I don't mean it in such a dramatic way. If someone's down in the dumps, someone's feeling negative, 
you, you, you can sort the problem out. Um, but you've got to be aware that there's a problem first. Um, so, you know, so in other words, before doing your own thing, before asserting your freedom, consider some of your social responsibilities um, relating to um, the people um, closest to you. Capricorn. I think Capricorn, it's going to be a good day. Um, in a way, everything is in place. Um, let's not forget that you know you, Capricorn is an Earth sign. The moon is in the moon is in Virgo, an Earth sign. The sun is in Capricorn, which is your star sign, and Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus. We've got this grand trine in Earth, so. Um, a lot of things are going to start moving for you. It's not um, it's not a movement that is is dramatic. You know, this is a grand trine in earth, not a grand trine in fire. Um, but you can start to slowly see things come together. Um, you know, when you look ahead, uh, what you're planning on doing, doing in, in, in a sort of material sense, how you're going to be sorting out your life, how you're going to be dealing with the immediate challenges of 2024. You can see it all coming together. Um, and I think um, I think that that is um, extremely fortunate. Um, yet some Capricorns may um, find themselves inadvertently being a bit cruel. Uh, you know, y you could do things to restrict people's freedom um, you could say things which are quite upsetting um, not in an immediate sense um, but you know think about um, you know what impact you're having on the people around you think about what you think about your words and your actions particularly your words I think you can um, because uh, you know, if you're not careful, you could be, I don't know, a walking bucket of cold water. You know, people are trying to, you know, familiarize, get get used to the new year. And you're just a bucket of cold water. You can, you're quite capable of destroying or undermining people's hopes. Um, I know that, sorry, that sounds a bit dramatic. Um, but you can be really negative without even thinking you're being negative. Um so do consider how you are occurring to people. Yes, it's it's always a good idea to bring people down to earth. You don't want people floating off on fantasies, but you don't want to you don't want to crush people. Um, so you know, be nice um, if you possibly can. Aquarius, um, what I just said, by the way, about Capricorn about being nice, don't be a walking bucking a bucket of cold water, um, actually applies to Aquarius as well as Capricorn. Um, Aquarians today can actually be um, quite cruel. Uh, you know, some people are feeling that um, the world is out to get them, that the world wants to restrict their freedom. And uh, you may be, you may in many cases appear to be the problem. Um, and that's especially going to be the case if today you are in a position of authority. I don't know, that could be within the family. Um, if you're working over the, over, over, over the New Year holiday today in particular, um, perhaps even in terms of friendships and the hierarchies within your friendships. Yeah, you can, you could really, um, you could you could just um, be be someone who just restricts, um, and that's not how Aquarius wants to be. You know, Aquarius should be about um, um, understanding one's um, one's individuality, not about restricting it. But that's that's how you could occur. So um, I would um, I would warn you about that. Um, um, and you also have to consider why you might want to sort of restrict people's freedom. I think part of it is because today 
um i know that we yeah, i know that um aquarius traditionally is not seen as the most emotional sign um uh, it's often seen as actually the least emotional sign perhaps gemini has that has that honor as a possibility but uh, you know your emotions are going to be quite important to you today and i suppose there is some possibility that you might be tempted to impose your feelings on other people um and as a result they you know they might get this sense of restriction so you need you do need a lot of self-awareness today um do consider what impact you're having on your social environment and uh yeah you know by all means have intense thoughts intense feelings um, that's fine uh it might actually be very healthy uh but yeah don't impose them on your on your environment um unless you've got a very good reason and unless you um really um know what you're doing and finally pisces uh pisces um like yesterday i think um you do have to consider um other people i mean after all the moon is in virgo and virgo is the opposite sign to pisces so uh when the moon is in virgo and um, it, it relates to other people because um in you know this sun sign astrology um the opposite sign to the sun sign often represents relationships so the moon in virgo represents other people um so the question is how do you actually um deal with other people um how should you how should you view them uh i would have said that you should look at the people around you um at least most of the people around you as a real plus in your life um they can really make things move for you um they can um you know they can give you excitement um uh they can um give you new ideas um and uh they can also you know give you a different perspective um you know pisces can be sometimes a bit caught in its own feelings um you know especially now because you know saturn has been in your star sign for a long time i think since march uh march of last year um and so you can get at times you can get rather stuck in your feelings you can get you know believe that your feelings are really important and you 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 don't want to talk about them or compromise them or whatever but um other people are giving you a different view uh they're saying well hold on you can't just be focused on one thing you got to consider these other things um you know what what about the world at large you know you've got to think beyond your own individuality and i think that's that is that is something useful um so i think you should always ask yourself um you know what of what have other people got to offer because really um i think they have got a great deal to offer um now finally uh i wanted to talk, briefly talk about the venus square saturn now if you've been listening well to this video the whole theme of this video is venus square saturn and i have i think i've set it up in um quite a negative way but i think for you pisces um this venus square saturn might actually be quite useful um you know reason being you know you've got you've got venus moving through sagittarius and sagittarius is the um you know the apex of your solar charts it's it's um a part of your solar chart connected with um uh career the way you move forward that kind of thing and you've got saturn moving through your star sign um and so when you have this square the sat you you've got venus and saturn both moving through important angles of your solar chart um and i think this venus square saturn does give you um a great deal of discipline um you know not just today i think tomorrow early part of a week a great deal of discipline to, you know to get things done um you can really get your act together um 
And, you know, in certain situations, you can, you know, you can be tough in terms of other people, but maybe it's right to be tough. You know, you have a vision of a way things should be. And I think that this Venus square Saturn might actually allow you to um, to realize this vision and find new ways of being successful. Um, but you do have to make sure that you pay some attention um, to um, to other people's um, sensitivities. OK, so that's uh, the astrology. And what I want to do now is look at today from the perspective of the um, of the I Ching. Um, so um, I asked the question, um, what is today, Monday, going to be like for people watching this video? Um, and the first hexagram I got was hexagram eight, which is holding together. Um, this is a very uh, sociable hexagram. It is about the people around us. Um, it's about making the right contacts with the, uh, with, with the people around us. Um, so we're getting this hexagram holding together in an astrological environment where we've got Venus square Saturn. Um, so, you know, Venus square Saturn can be difficult from a social perspective. Um, it can be about people falling apart, not holding together. So we've got to be aware of that. Um, it's a situation, yeah, when it's easy to fall apart, but um, what we actually have to do is, um, is if we possibly can, um, is hold together um, and you know that requires uh, that requires us to have um, a great deal of sincerity um, we have to be clear that uh, this is we this is what we want to happen um, we we have we know which people are important to us we know which people we can help um, and uh, in the first instance, the, you know, this bottom line moves. Um, so in the first instance, just showing sincerity, at least outward sincerity, um, even if we're not entirely convinced. You know, we're thinking, we're almost going through the motions here, but we have to kind of show some sincerity to, to the people around us because we know that it's important to hold together. Um, um, I suppose it's, it's like, you know, it's like that phrase, isn't it? Um, we either, um, hang together or we hang separately. Uh, that's a bit dramatic. Um, I don't think we're in a revolutionary situation uh, where we have to hang together. Otherwise we'll hang separately. Um, but that's, uh, that's, you know, it's that kind of spirit. We do need to hold together. And as the day progresses, um, this sincerity might transform into actual honesty when we can start to tell people how we really feel about them. And there might be a point where we can actually really express to people how much we appreciate them, um, how much we, how fond we are of them, um, you know, in a very genuine, um, sort of down to earth, sincere kind of way. And when we, you know, when we are able to express ourselves um, and show our appreciation, express our appreciation, that's going to really help bring people together. And it's a good way of getting over that Venus square Saturn. And this uh, holding together, it does morph into a second hexagram. And that he second hexagram is hexagram 17 following and um, it's it's a kind of an, an intensification of hanging together. Um, it's about um, maybe people following us, or perhaps there is someone else who is the leader. I don't mean leader in a power sense of way. Someone, some, you know, the, the person who has 
uh, who has the charisma who, and who has the best interests of the group. Uh, whoever that person is, uh, that person needs to be followed. And perhaps um, the way to, to really get sort things out is to, you know, to, to let it focus on one individual. And if we think, if we're... If we're, if we're destined to be the leader, at least today, then um, people who want to follow us, they will, they will be, you know, they don't have to be persuaded. They'll just come of their own accord. And um, then we're, we'll be in a position to, you know, uh, um, dispense help and advice or whatever. But we mustn't be proud. It may not be us who's destined to be today's leader. It may be someone else. In which case, we should just accept the situation and um, uh, do what's required of us. Um, so overall, the I Ching possibly gives a more optimistic view of today for the astrology. I mean, I think the Venus square Saturn is a bit of a problem, but... Uh, the I Ching is certainly suggesting that there is a way to get to, a way to get over it, and I suppose we shouldn't forget that you know Venus is in mutual reception to Jupiter. So I don't maybe one's you know one's I'm exaggerating um, the difficulties of um, Venus square Saturn. Okay, so um, let's now um, look at some charts. Um, so this picture, I mean. Uh, this guy, um, uh, yeah, he was uh, he was in the SS. Um, he was born. Uh, his name is Hans Adolf Prutzmann, and he was born on August the thirty first, nineteen o one, and he was in the, the Second World War. He was responsible for. Um, a lot of atrocities um, against Jews, against partisans in Ukraine, in the Baltic states, I think in Croatia. Um, and uh, yeah, so he was he was a nasty piece of work and he had Venus square Saturn. Um, so how might Venus square Saturn make him um, a nasty piece of work? Um, oh, I notice he's um, he's also he was also a Virgo. He had Sun and Mercury in Virgo. You know, Caligula was a Virgo. I should look at Caligula's chart um, one day. Um, uh, so uh, you know, Venus. Uh, it, you know, Venus is about empathy that can be one way of looking at venus you know he's got venus in libra that's great isn't it um uh, venus is in its own sign in libra um but it just shows you can't just read everything from venus in you know you can't just say oh venus in libra what would you say if you saw venus in libra oh well venus in its, is in its own sign it's very pleasant um it likes to perhaps compromise um, understands people's likes and dislikes and so forth. Um, that's looking at Venus in Libra in isolation. Okay, he, in terms of, I don't know, his promotions and whatever, going through the ranks of the SS and whatever, maybe Venus in Libra was very, was, um, was, um, very useful, making the right connections with, um, Nazis and whatever. I suppose you could say that's how Venus and Libra might have worked. But you know, they're also with Venus there should be some kind of um kind of empathy, um understanding people. Uh yet his Venus is square Saturn. I mean this is a noon chart. Uh we I, we don't know what time he was born. We know he was, you know, born in well I suppose probably somewhere in Prussia. Now it's Poland, um, but so here's Venus square Saturn, and so um, Venus square Saturn at its absolute worst, um, I suppose can can create a monster, someone who has absolutely no um, uh, empathy for other people other people and and their feelings and i suppose you can try to be psycho you know take a sort of a psychoanalytical approach and sort of wonder well what happened in his childhood or whatever well we don't have access to that information um 
but uh, uh, that's his chart. I mean, I don't really want to say much more about his chart. I was just so I just thought his picture. He looked as I don't know. I don't know what, what you think about that picture, but he does look really icy. Does he have any water in his chart? I don't know. Um, if we take his chart for noon, he has his he has his moon at 2857 Pisces. Now, when I saw that picture, I was thinking that he has got no water in his chart. OK, I understand he's got Neptune in Cancer, but that's a generational thing. I was thinking, well, he has got no traditional planets in water. That was my feeling when I looked at his chart. Um, uh, now, at noon, his moon was at 2857 Pisces. So that, that was that is a water sign. So if he was born... Um, after two or three in the afternoon then it, the moon would go into Aries and he would have no water but I don't have a time of birth uh, so um, I don't I don't know and I'm, lack of water Venus square Saturn that would certainly raise the possibility that someone is is really uh, really difficult I think off the top of my head that Hitler had Venus square Saturn uh, and did he have Venus square Saturn? Um, he certainly had Venus in Taurus, Saturn in Leo. Uh, I don't know what the exact orb on that um, is. Uh, I suppose I should go and find out. Um, uh, uh, okay, let's have a look. Uh There is, yeah, Hitler had Venus square Saturn. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, and he had no water in his chart. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the worst of them all had Venus square Saturn. Um, and this this uh, also Hans Adolf Prutzmann had um, Venus, square, Venus square Saturn. Um, another person who has a terrible reputation is Charles Manson. Um, Charles Manson um, uh, has Venus square Saturn. Now, what's interesting about Charles Manson's chart is his 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 Venus. I mean, his Venus. Charles Manson's Venus is a is a complete nightmare because um, his Venus is in um, Scorpio, in its detriment. His Venus is conjunct the Sun. Um, in other words, it's combust. And as you can see, Venus is square Saturn. Um, so that might say something about um, how he treats women or treat, sorry, treated women. And of course, his most famous victim was um, Sharon Tate. Um, now, Sharon Tate, uh, if we look at Sharon Tate's chart, Sharon Tate had her Venus at um, 20 degrees Aquarius. So going, so in Sharon Tate's chart, her Venus, so um, uh, if you don't know, Sharon Tate was this actress who, she was the wife, a pregnant wi wife of Roman Polanski. Um, and... Um, Charles Manson's fam, members of Charles Manson's family, um, his group, not his literal family, um, murdered her and the unborn baby um, in uh, August 1969. Um, so that Venus in Aquarius, that's hers. I mean, Venus, it's not projected. She's, she's a woman. She was a woman. She was a famous actress. That's hers. That's her Venus. And uh, if you go going back to um, Charles Manson's chart, um, uh, I've lost Charles Manson's chart. So um, you're yeah, going back to Charles Manson's chart. Um, his Saturn is ex was exactly conjunct um, Sharon Tate's Venus, and his so his Venus was square her Venus. So. Venus could represent, as a projected planet, could represent w women in general, the universal woman, um, 
and he is most famous for um, orchestrating the death of Sharon Tate and so maybe that that is part of how his Venus Square Saturn um, was working um, and in a way you could argue that the killing of Sharon that the murder of Sharon Tate was sort of the end of the 60s um, the sort of the fantasy of the 60s came down to earth in a horrible way um, in August 1969 when still the 60s had a few months left to run but maybe it really ended and we saw the whole nastiness of you know the the 60s the 60s ideal and the acid and the lsd and everything else and that's when it all ended and maybe that's uh, his venus square saturn he squelched a whole lot um of course it would have happened anyway but it was it's kind of was kind of um symbolic now going back to the sort of the second world war and this concepts of genocide um in the 20th century obviously there were two genocides uh, two very famous, infamous genocides. Um, the first genocide was of the Armenians um, in Turkey um, during the First World War. Um, and this genocide um, was against the yeah it was so it was against the Armenians, and it happened in the context of Turkey's war against Russia. Um, Turkey and Russia, Russia was, um, when Russia was run by Tsar Nicholas II, um, Turkey was at war with Russia, and the Russians, um, I think they, they really defeated um, the, the Turks, they routed the Turks, the Turks didn't do well, um, and this caused um, a lot of aggravation um, in Turkey, and a lot of the um, Armenians, um, who were resident on, in, in Turkey were either supporting Russia or were accused of supporting Russia. And this gave rise, uh, this helped stir up um, the genocide against, against, the, against the Armenians. And the genocide actually had a beginning um, and the beginning of the Armenian genocide was on April the 20, was considered to be on April the twenty fourth, nineteen fifteen, and, and uh, indeed at eight p.m. And I think that eight p.m. was when an order was signed that uh, in in Constantinople, which is now known as Istanbul, um, that um, you know certain. Um, Armenian intellectuals and others be arrested and this was the beginning of the genocide um, and you can see that Venus was at 27 Pisces and Saturn was at 2815 Gemini so there was a Venus Saturn square um, at the beginning of the genocide um, and I suppose I mean I'm I'd <laughs> I mean, I suppose there's no, I don't know what, you know, it's a bit dramatic to say Venus, to associate Venus square Saturn with genocide. Um, but I suppose Venus is about relating to other people. It's about people and Venus in Pisces. Venus is conjunct Skeet, the fixed star Skeet in this chart. And so Skeet is, is about shipwrecks and disasters. And that certainly didn't help. So although Venus was exalted in Pisces, it was quite close to Skeet. Um, but so Venus square Saturn um, is a, about just the the squelching of human feeling of human compassion, um, and Saturn is Saturn in Gemini is just about ideas and you know the mind just ignoring human suffering, just thinking this just has to happen and whatever for whatever reason. Um, hence uh, you know perhaps venus saturn square um was encouraging this this mass arrest um of armenians in in, Ista, in constantinople on april 24th 1915 and after that um the genocide unfolded and i'm not quite sure how many armenians died in the in the, in the genus in this genocide i think it was it one million two million i'm not sure um but let's look at another genocide chart um, obviously, the genocide we most think of in the 20th century is the Holocaust, um, 
And the Holocaust sort of started really um, the moment um, uh, the moment um, that the Second World War started, you know, when when the Germans moved into sort of Poland and Russia and so forth. But there is a sort of a more formal date to the start of the Holocaust, and that is the um, Vansay Conference. So the Vansay Conference was on January the 20th, 1942, um, um, in Vansay, which is outside Berlin. And I think the conference started um, around noon. Um, And so this is when a lot of Nazis came together and they decided on the final solution. So although it's true that the genocide had had sort of been, had started, you know, you'd had huge massacres going on in 1941, um, the whole thing was formalized um, at the Vansay Conference. And so you could say that the the real Holocaust really started at the Vansay conference. I mean, you know, I'm not a historian, uh, but and I'm just just looking at it from a you know from a sort of interested layman's perspective. So if we look at the chart for the Vansay conference, this is the chart for when the conference started, um, and you can see that. Um, uh, there's Saturn, 21 Taurus, and there's Venus at 20 Aquarius. So Venus was square Saturn. So standard thing, Venus is um, any hope of compassion. (laughs) And then Saturn in Taurus. Um, Saturn in Taurus, you know, Taurus can be Ruthless, we have to do this. There is no alternative. This is what we need to do. And they all sort of came together and um, the man who organised it, Heydrich, um, was very happy with the way things went. He said, everyone agreed, no problems. He was expecting some arguments, but no, it all went smoothly. Um, and he got what he wanted and they all agreed to the final solution. And Venus was square Saturn. The people there at the Vansay conference were able to just crunch any any feelings of uh, human compassion, whatever. All went Venus square Saturn. Okay, so let's um, look at a couple more charts, a couple of very different charts, um, totally different chart. Um, so let's uh, let's look at. Um, I don't know, uh, singers, <laughs> um, Sinead O'Connor, she has uh, Venus square Saturn. I'm not going to spend very long on these charts because I don't really know much about Sinead O'Connor. Um, but uh, I think that at times she had um, quite um, quite a difficult childhood um, and she had has had real sort of issues with religion and being abused by i think nuns or something real she had real issues with the catholic church um um she's had um, a number of um different sort of relationships and life is life seems to be tough it's, you know from the, I, mean, I know she's just died quite recently um but life seems to have been tough for her um and there you can see that she's got her Venus in Sagittarius, Venus in Sagittarius wanting um, um, to reach for something else. Um, you know, religion, I think, became... Imp- re- religion seemed to be a real um, concern for her. You know, she was very, very, very critical of the Catholic Church and the Pope. Um, then I think she became a Muslim uh, at, at one stage. And... You know, there is her Venus square, Venus square Saturn. Um, Maybe that Venus square Saturn does in some way reflect her issues with religion, Saturn in Pisces, Venus in Sagittarius. Um, So that's Sinead O'Connor's chart. Um, 
another chart i think again i i know even i don't really know anything about it. aretha franklin had venus square saturn um i think she Again, she had a difficult childhood. I think she, am I right in saying that she got pregnant when she was 12 or something like that, when she was really young? Um, now, that would suggest, uh, at least by modern standards, a certain amount of abuse. Um, um, and uh, she had Venus square Saturn. And I think she was in, some of her relationships were abusive. Um and you can see that she has Venus, um, Venus in Aquarius, and Saturn in Taurus. Um, now that Venus Saturn square, it it is in mutual reception. Um, Venus is in the sign of Saturn. Saturn is in the sign of Venus. Um, now that might have some indication uh, with musical ability or at least musical discipline. Um, Venus can be connected with the arts, um, with with beauty and that kind of thing. Um, and so perhaps that Venus square, mu Venus mutual reception to Saturn, um, maybe there was a silver lining to that. Um, I should also note, also uh, the thing about Aretha Franklin that really strikes me is that her moon is absolutely fantastic. Um, her moon on a ninth house cusp you know it's a she was born at night and the moon was above the horizon which is exactly where it should be um, it was um, and it's in moon feminine sign sorry in a, a feminine planet feminine sign um, and so the moon is moon is um, really uh, really great in that chart um, so uh, yeah that must have helped in terms of projecting herself to the public um, and being successful so that's her chart another another chart is opera winfrey um opera winfrey um i believe opera winfrey um got pregnant at a really young age and and um uh i don't think the child su survived very i much beyond birth i don't know i mean the child did not survive um but that might say something about um about her i mean i think that uh uh i mean she's been with her current partner i believe since 1986 but i think looking at her biography she you know there have been sort of relationship difficulties for her in the past at least before 1986 where things haven't worked out and relationships have caused a lot of uh, caused her a lot of stress um and her venus is in is in pretty bad shape you can see that she's got uh, venus in aquarius conjunct the sun i.e the sun is combust um and um venus is square is, is square saturn um so that could have been difficult um maybe you know she was somehow able to harness this venus square saturn um obviously obviously she's an extremely rich woman um and it may be that the t in her case uh, the toughness of that venus square saturn um not getting venus square saturn perhaps in her case um, not getting involved in relationships, in long-lasting relationships at an early age, made a big difference and helped her be successful. Um, um, I think. I think there was, you know, one relationship she had. I think it might even been at high school. The person said, broke the relationship off. But I think because they, as far as they were concerned. Uh, opera winfrey was destined for higher things and he did oh, maybe maybe so and that that might so maybe the venus saturn yeah there is um a positive side for that even though venus her in her chart venus square saturn is it's not in mutual reception um although um venus in a, in, in fact it's a very under pressure um venus um so that's uh oh yes um uh, venus in Venus square Saturn um, may have something to do with bad judgment, um, misunderstanding uh, the social environment. 
And in that case, and, and that's how I want to look at the chart of Alyssa Heinerscheid. You remember her? You remember all the, the um, remember the Bud Light thing? Um, when um, Bud Light, I mean, I was talking about Dylan Mulvaney's horoscope recently. So Bud Light had um, Dylan Mulvaney as its, um, um, uh, I don't know, to represent it or whatever. And if there was his, you know, so Dylan Mulvaney was this, um, he was an actor who trans, who said, who became a woman. And so he was trans and uh and so she was um, now a woman, and she was. And Dylan Mulvaney was going to be the the face of Bud Light, and Dylan Mulvaney's was all over the was, picture was on the Bud Light can, and Alyssa Heinerschild was, I think, the, the some marketing director or something at Bud Light, and she was very much associated with the decision. Um, to use a Dylan Mulvaney, um, and um, as a result, the Bud Light brand was destroyed, um, as far as I can see. Um, so she presumably cost um, the owners of Bud Light. I, I don't know, or she and any other people involved in the decision would have cost them billions of dollars. Um, so look at her Venus. She has got Venus, uh, Venus in Aquarius, square Saturn. So in her case, um, now Venus in Aquarius, uh, you know, she's got, now I don't have a time of birth, um, but so she's got, the, she's almost certainly got the moon in Aries, unless she was born really right at midnight. So she's almost certainly got the moon in Aries. And um, uh so she's quite quite into doing her thing. She wants to do her thing, and she was she was uh, quite assertive. Um, remember, moon, female, woman, female planet, um, and uh, she's also got Mercury conjunct the Sun. Mercury in Pisces, very weak Mercury in Mercury's in Pisces, which is in its detriment. Um, sorry, in its uh, yeah, it's in its detriment or. Um, conjunct the sun so she can't quite get the whole picture she thinks she gets the picture but she doesn't get the picture and then you've got venus in aquarius venus in aquarius is you know venus female planet female chart that's her venus in aquarius very idealistic um she she thinks she knows the way things are going and I think she said something like, it's time to change the image of Bud Light. We don't want it to be, you know, with people like uh, usual associations, like male, redneck, whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't can't remember quite what she said, but she doesn't want, she wanted to break those associations because uh, it might be good for the brand. So she makes an appalling error of judgment. And that error of judgment might be down, partly down to Venus square Saturn. Venus square Saturn is preventing Venus to function from functioning properly um venus is supposed to be able to understand um the world in which she operates um to have empathy for the world in which she operates and so saturn just is just her you know saturn in scorpio it's her views her her particular way of being imposing itself on that venus um and so yeah so that prevents her from really evaluating the situation it may not just of course be venus square saturn but it could be the fact that she's got sun conjunct mercury but i mean i think it's venus square saturn could be about uh, yeah it could be about making a bad judgment about something about something like branding and about understanding um one's one's customers um so that that is a possibility um so perhaps if you're hiring a market if you're a ceo you're hiring a marketing director maybe you should think twice before you hire someone with venus square saturn anyway that's just an idea okay so that's um venus square saturn um again these i've looked at charts that are on that i have that i'm interested in on some of the charts that i'm interested in um that uh, i have immediate access to and 
of course there's selection bias there. Um, you know, I'm not saying that Venus square Saturn can't be can't always be useful. Um, I think you know, Opera Winfrey, extremely rich woman, um, very successful. Um, um, Aretha Franklin, that Venus square Saturn may may have may have really helped her. Um, Venus Saturn in neutral reception gave her discipline. Uh, Venus is to do with can be to do with aesthetics, the art. Oh, one final person, George Soros. Uh, George Soros. I'm going to last chart. One more person, George Soros. Um, Again, incredibly rich person, incredibly successful. Um, he's a man who broke the Bank of England, who betted against the pound in the early 90s. Um, and um, a lot of people um, have real issues with um, George Soros. Um, and there he's got Venus at 2 Libra in the exaltation of um, Saturn. There he is. He's got Venus square Saturn. So they're not in, uh, they're not in neutral reception, um, but uh, he certainly has Venus square Saturn. Um, he is um, very focused on his particular um, view of the world, and uh, he is um, he has been very successful with Venus square Saturn. Um, so perhaps that's the toughness and um, the discipline of Venus square Saturn, and perhaps yeah, if you if you want to be a, to be successful like him, uh, you need to um, you can't have too much empathy for you can can you for other people, particularly if you're trading against them. Certainly wouldn't have much not not, not going to have much trading for the Bank of England uh, if you're betting against the pound. Um, okay, that's that's it. That really is it. Um, so yes, that is Venus square Saturn. Um, I'm sorry uh, if the theme of this video um, is so negative, um, and I'm sorry if I've been a bit too negative about Venus square Saturn, particularly if you've got Venus square Saturn in your chart. Um, but uh, I have looked at a, I have looked at a set of extreme charts. That's the thing about looking at celebrities. You know, you, you look at charts that um, um, that really demonstrate something in a major, exaggerated, hyperbol hyperbolic way. Um, that is one approach to getting to grips um, with astrology. OK, well, um, thank you for listening. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, um, I would be grateful if you liked it. Um, and if you're not subscribed, and you have enjoyed the video, then I'd be grateful um, if you were to subscribe to my channel. And um, if you want to buy me a coffee, uh, there is a link in the description. Anyway, thanks again for listening. And yeah, Happy New Year. Um, I'm sure it's going to be great. And um, don't get upset by my negativity today. That's just, just the way it is right now. Anyway, I will talk to you again tomorrow.